Good morning, everybody. Pastor Joe McClure here with Open Doors Community Church. Today we're going to look at, have you been marked? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. We want to welcome everyone in the uh, audience as well as all of you out there. Father God, we just praise you and thank you. Lord, let this message do something today. Let something in the people's hearing and seeing that would draw them to you and change their life, Father. Be with the less fortunate, those that are struggling and hurting, as only you can do. Holy Ghost, take charge of this message. Give the people of God the revelation, the importation, and the illumination of the Word of God in their understanding that they would never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen and hallelujah. All right, open your Bibles to 1 John chapter 2. Today we're going to look at, have you been marked? And here we go. We know, verse 3 through 6, that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. The man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in Jesus must walk as Jesus walked. Boy, that makes it pretty simple, don't it? Whoever claims to live in him, that means the, the claim to fame that I am a Christian, born again, spirit-filled, then I must walk as Jesus walked. I mean, we're emulating the Father. Just as you would your earthly father. Many kids grow up trying to imitate their parents. We are to be the example of Christ. We are to be able to show people the cross and take them to the cross. Lead people to the cross. Whoever claims to live in him, him being Jesus, must walk as Jesus walked. John was contending against a misunderstanding of the doctrine of grace and salvation. He opposed antinomian teachers who taught that forsaking a sinful life was optional for the believer. Number one, they declared that one can legitimately claim to know God in a saving relationship and at the same time be indifferent to God's will and God's commands while disregarding them and disobeying them altogether. Mm. John 17, 3. Now this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. There's John 17, 3. Eternal life is more than endless existence. It is a special quality of life that we as believers receive when we partake of the essential life of God through Christ. This allows us to know God in an ever-growing knowledge and fellowship with the Father, with the Son, and with the Holy Ghost. In the New Testament, eternal life is described as, one, a present reality, chapter 5, verse 24. I tell you the truth, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. Mm. 5.24 
524 also in the hearing and the belief. Jesus describes those who have eternal life and will not be condemned as whoever hears and whoever believes. The verbs, hears the Greek word, akua, and believes the Greek word, histero, are present participles, emphasizing ongoing action, i.e., whoever is hearing and believing. Thus, the hearing and believing are not acts of a single moment, but actions that must continue continually. They're faith words, action words. They're to be done repetitively over and over and over and over and over again. What are we talking about? Have you been marked? Those that are found to be in Christ are different. They don't look like the world. They don't follow along with the world. They don't hold God in one hand and the world in the other hand, depending on what group they're with. Christ affirms that our present possession of eternal life is conditional on a present living faith rather than on a momentary decision of faith sometime in the past. Present possession of eternal life requires a living faith. Shouldn't be surprised at that. Eternal life is not secured and maintained merely by an act of repentance and faith occurring in the past. It involves also a present living union and fellowship with Christ. 1 John 5, 12. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. 5, 12 note. He who has the Son has life. All people should hear the gospel because eternal life is in... God the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and cannot be received or possessed in any other way. He is the only way and the only life in John 14, 6. Eternal life is Christ's life in us. We have it as we maintain a vital faith relationship with Jesus. At any time did Jesus ever give up? Did he ever stop remaining faithful? Did he ever refuse and not go to the cross? No. He continued on with the mission at hand even asking the Father if there could be any other way. He knew what he was going to go through. But yet he prayed, Not my way, Father. Your way. Your will be done. Jesus continued faithfully. So, why would anybody in their right mind think we could have Jesus and yet live a life of substandard and sinful living? Mm. There is no eternal life apart from Him. And remember what 1 John 2, 6 says. He that claims to be in Jesus must walk as Jesus walked. Mm. God says what he means. Number two, a future hope. Eternal life is associated with the coming of Christ for his faithful and is contingent on our living by faith and by the Spirit of God. 
Let's look at James chapter 2. We're going to look at verses 14, 17, 18, 20, and 26. 14, what good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save him? Well, the answer is no. Verse 17 and 18, in the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds and I'll show you my faith by what I do. You foolish man. Do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is also dead. When you got born again, talking about traits of the twice born, when you got born again, God put some in Delible marks upon you that cannot be erased or done away with. When you became heaven born, you also became heaven bound. Mm, I love that. It's one thing to talk the talk, but it's another thing to walk the walk. That's what people will pay attention to. Many people say a lot of things. But in observing them, you find out what's being confessed from their mouth is being denied by their lifestyle. True believers have birthmarks. These birthmarks are, number one, submitting to his lordship. That's the key right there. Many people want to submit to him as savior. Oh, I want to be saved. I want to go to heaven when I die. I don't want to go to some place worse off than this old world I'm living in. But now, submitting to him as Lord, well, that's a different thing. That means i got to do things that pleases him. I can no longer please myself. Uh, I don't know about that one. So these birthmarks are, number one, submitting to his lordship. Number two, seeking his lifestyle. Number three, sharing his love. So we're looking at one, submitting to his lordship. Two, seeking his lifestyle. And number three, sharing his love. Submitting, seeking, sharing. All are faith words. They don't stop. They never end. As long as we are alive on this earth, we as believers, as true Christians, we will never stop submitting. We will never stop seeking. And we will never stop sharing. The day we stop doing these, either we have gone to heaven or we've sold ourselves out. To walk as Jesus walked. 1 John 2, 6, one will never stop walking as Jesus walked, or for that matter, also as Jesus talked. One of the great invitations is Romans 5, 8, that says it so plain. It says that God demonstrated his love for us. See, this is what unconditional love is. You didn't have to prove yourself to God. You didn't have to clean yourself up to come to God. 
You didn't have to take a six-week course or a big seminar. You didn't have to change your clothes. God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While you and I were still sinners, Jesus Christ, God's one and only Son, chose to die for you and I anyway. My God, what a Savior. Why would you not want to be a part of that kingdom, a part of that family? Why would you not want to be saved and surrender to his lordship? Mm -mm -mm. I'm not going to serve anything else but the Lord Jesus Christ. And he was crucified for my sin. And for yours, my friend, God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, while we were still in our mess, Jesus told his Father, Father, I'm still going to the cross to give them an opportunity for eternal life. Wouldn't you like to do that today? Wouldn't you like to meet this Savior who willfully gave his life up so that you could have eternal life and join him in paradise? You know, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. All you got to do is repent. Trust in what Jesus done at the cross. And give your life to him to be repossessioned, repositioned, and to be heaven bound. Say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I repent of everything I've ever done wrong, Lord. Forgive me of my sins. Lord, cleanse me and I will be clean. Save me and I will be saved. And I will confess you as the Lord of my life, your boss, and I'm not. Lord, there's been many of things I've done wrong in my life and many people I've hurt. And I am in great need to repent and to receive a Savior. I hope that that has given you enough time to think about where you're at in your life. What's going on and to know that the Lord accepts you just like you are. Now, I want you to do something for me. For those of you that repented and accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I just want you to lift your hand right where you are. God will see it. It don't matter where you're sitting or where you're at. Just lift it up, showing Jesus that, Lord, I have given my life to you. I'm going to heaven when I die. That is the greatest decision you have ever made in your life. So let's pray. Father God, I pray for those that have surrendered to you today. I ask, Lord, that you help them, strengthen them, comfort them. Be with them through their struggles of life and help them in any situation that they go through. You promised I will never leave them and I will never forsake them. And, Lord, you said it. I believe it. That settles it. Now you show them, Lord. What a wonderful life being a Christian is. Still tough. Life is tough on this earth till we leave. But thank God those that have received you 
have their place in heaven. And one of these days, they'll be leaving and going there as I'm waiting for my time now. So, Father, I praise you and I thank you for what you've done today. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, that's the greatest decision you have ever made. You get in a good Bible-believing church that'll preach the whole truth, nothing but the truth. And if you're having trouble finding one, give us a shout and we'll help you depending on what area you're in. But if you're still having trouble, then you tune in every Sunday morning at 1030 to Open Doors. And uh, I will commit Pastor Joe McClure to preach the whole truth, nothing but the truth. God bless you. Have a good rest of the weekend. Until the next time, amen and hallelujah.